Hello folks and welcome into TK Power Sports. This is the Polaris Ranger XP Kinetic Ultimate. And yes, kinetic means it is all electric. Now in this video, I want to show you all the features so we'll crawl all over this thing and show it off. But then we have to have a conversation about all electric off-roading and all electric side-by-sides. Is this really the future? We're going to talk about all of that right now. Let's start by going over all of the all electric numbers here. So this is the ultimate model, which means it gets all of the features and a larger battery pack. This is a 29.8 kilowatt hour battery pack. And Polaris says you can expect a range of around 80 miles. Now, when it comes time to plug it in, if you install a level two charger at your home that is using 240 volt, you can recharge this thing in five hours. If you're just running off of level one charging, that is a standard 120 volt plug that you already have in your house, you can fully recharge this thing in 20 hours. Now, if you do go for the premium model, you're getting a battery pack that is half this size, so then you can expect half the range, but also half the time to charge it up. So you have to decide, yeah, what range and what battery pack works for you. Now, the other number I want to spit out right now, 110 horsepower. So you are getting a significant amount of power out of this Ranger. Now let's just talk about the features. And yes, the one thing I like is it's very much a standard Polaris Ranger. They do add this one light bar across the front here. Outside of that, styling wise, it looks the exact same as the Ranger. And I think that is the best way to implement an all electric powertrain. It doesn't have to look crazy. Just make it look like the rest but make it electric and that's what Polaris has done here. So then talking features, you are getting this massive steel bumper that I like. There's one omission that I honestly don't understand. There's no winch here. And on the top of the line model, I've come to expect a standard winch, especially for something this expensive. And we'll get to the price later on. But yeah, I'm surprised to not see a standard winch down there in the front. Now coming around the side, talking tires, that is a set of 29 inch Pro Armor tires. Behind that, a very typical dual A arm suspension setup and you're getting 10 inches of travel in the front and 10 inches of travel out here in the back. Now, like I said, it's a standard Ranger. So over here where gasoline would normally go, they've replaced it with your charge port. So this is where you're going to plug your Ranger in down here. And actually I'm almost struggling to get it off, but this little cap, there it is. I like how tightly it fits on there. You want to make sure the elements aren't going to get into your charge port, right? So it's got a really nice, tight fitting cap right there. Now we get around to the back and like I said, standard Ranger, which means you're getting a dump bed, which you can control from either side. Nice to have the dumping bed, makes it that much more convenient to work with. And underneath, you're gonna notice this doesn't look anything like a standard Ranger. This is one of those spots, yeah, where it looks very different. It's all sealed up too, so you'd have to remove this big shield to actually get in there and do any work. Now, when it comes to the bed itself, again, you're getting a standard size bed here too. I like that, you're not giving up any utility. And there's a whole bunch of features here, things like D-rings down here in the corners, all four of them, so you do have some hard mounting points. You can see all these slots in the bed wall. Those are for lumber, so you can put some dividers in here. You can see the holes and slots in the top, you can fit different accessories uh, in there as well. So again, a very much a standard bed. You do get sort of the standard tailgate setup. There's one thing that is different here though. It's over here in this corner. You are getting power in the back of your bed here. Just 12 volt power, but still nice to have. The one thing that's weird though, it's not a very typical setup. It's very much uh, a unique plug in there. So I don't know if you need an adapter or if you just need uh, different things that plug right in here, but yeah, it's not a standard 12 volt kind of cigarette lighter style plug, which is a little bit strange. So tailgate back up again, you can see your rear suspension, very typical what you're going to find on every other Ranger. And you are getting your standard two inch hitch receiver down here, which I like as well. And right on it, it tells you max trailer weight here, 2,500 pounds, which means your max hitch weight, your tongue weight, is 250 pounds. Let's climb in and take a look inside at all the features. So first of all, we just have the basic nets here on this model. I will show you the storage before I get in because this passenger seat does flip up. I like that right over there, they put that ring in for a bucket too, but anything that's kind of tall would stand in over there. And then you get 
access down here to some things. So you still have a standard 12 volt battery. You can see those orange lines, those are high voltage lines. So you don't want to touch anything that is bright orange. I appreciate that they do that. And then you got access in there to what looks like an ECU and some kind of computer controllers. Still nice to have that access for maintenance. So we can close that down. Uh, the driver's seat does not flip up, but that is because it is adjustable. So I can sit here, which way, there it goes. And it's actually many inches of adjustability, which is nice for your taller or shorter riders. And then the steering wheel here, adjustable as well. So you can set it up so it works for you. Uh, again, talking about interior storage, there is a bunch here. We got cup holders on both sides. You get cup holders down below. You get this bin down below, which actually, this is one difference on a regular Ranger. This is a lot deeper here on this electric Ranger. It's pretty shallow. Same with these ones over here. This one is deep right underneath the steering wheel. But outside of that, these ones are really, really shallow. Now looking at storage over here, typical glove box. And then the upper glove box, which is pretty dang hard to open. So uh, yeah, decent amount of ad hand storage, which is incredibly important for any utility side by side. Uh, now looking at the controls down here, you're gonna notice the funniest one, which is full HVAC. This unit did have a full cab on it, and then they removed it before Polaris sent it to us for testing. I do not know why they did that, but it is very silly to have full HVAC in a unit with no cab on it. But still, if you just want the AC or the heat blowing right on your face, you can do that. So cool to have it, but yeah, again, it's kind of weird. We don't have the cab. Uh, we do get a switch here for that 12 volt power, so you can turn it on or turn it off. I get my drive mode switch here to go from standard to sport to e Eco Plus, and then the four wheel drive switch, again, exactly what you see in every other Polaris model. You get turf mode, that's one wheel drive, two wheel drive, that's gonna lock up your rear differential, or proper four wheel drive, which will send the power forward. But Polaris' system is still on demand, so you have to kind of slip the tires a bit, and then it will send the power. But that's exactly like you're gonna find in every other Ranger. Now, Sort of the main piece of technology here is Polaris Ride Command, and uh, it's displayed here on a seven inch touchscreen, a really nice looking touchscreen. I'm not gonna go into all of the details, but there's a lot that you can get from this screen. Of course, on this all electric model, your charge and your range, those are very important, so it is nice to see that. Another thing on this gauge here you can see is regen. Yes, this thing will regenerate some power when you're going down a hill or when you're braking, it will actually regen. So cool to kind of see that regen in real time. And then all kinds of different things. We could have front and rear cameras on this unit, although this unit we have here today doesn't have them. There's a charging screen that's gonna show your range and your battery. And then yeah, a full map, pretty quick to respond. It'll show you, it also has all kinds of different settings. So you can add waypoints, you can do a group ride. So other people out there with their Polaris models, you can link up and you can see them on the map as well. You can usually communicate with them too using a text feature. Uh, and then you can hook up your phone, you can listen to music. This also has FM radio. So nice to have that too. You can uh, be bumping your tunes while you're on the trail. So lots of really neat functionality coming in with that Polaris Ride Command system. And that is standard when you step up to this ultimate model. Now straight in front of me here, it's a much more basic screen, but I also like the way it looks. And Polaris does things a little different here for its kinetic. You're getting the kind of blue accents up here, which is a little different. And you get this battery readout. And I think that's important. I mean, you can get your battery information here. You can also get it over here. Again, you can go to that charging screen and get it. But with an EV, that is always top of mind. How much more range do I have? So Polaris is really showing you that in many different places. And uh, yeah, now we just need to kind of talk about what is it like to own an all electric side by side and whether or not this is the future. And I'm gonna start this conversation by saying, usage case and this goes for any model but it's so much more important i feel with an ev if your usage case is correct this can be an excellent tool for you now let me explain here uh, where we do all of our testing we have just under 70 acres of land but honestly not a lot of it is cleared so we have our trails but then in this parking lot this is where our machines basically live we're moving around logs and trailers and leaves and whatever else we're moving picnic benches or firewood we're splitting firewood right now and taking it down to our woodshed all of these jobs require a utility side by side all of these jobs are made easier by a utility side by side but for us 
we're never going far. So we've had this Kinetic now, I think for about three weeks and we've been using it basically on the weekends because we don't live here. We just come up on the weekends most often and we're still at 79% battery. So for us personally, this thing would actually work quite well because we don't need to plug it in all the time. You're not gonna have that range anxiety because you're constantly running the battery out. And especially for people kind of seasonal like us that only come up on the weekends, well, yeah, you plug it in all week long and every single time you show up, you're going to have a full charge. So the advantage there is we're not worrying about range, but then we're also getting the silence of this EV. You're getting the instant torque and the power of this EV, which I really appreciate. And then you just don't have to worry about buying gas. And again, we don't have any gas stations close by, so I don't actually drive this thing to the gas station or any of our side-by-sides. I go to the gas station with the truck, I fill up a jerry can, I bring the jerry can, I pour it in. Sure, we've gotten used to it, it's not a big deal, but it's one less thing that I don't have to think about. That is nice. So. Usage case is important, and for us, the usage case actually checks out. This thing checks all of those boxes and uh, really would offer us some significant advantages. There is one major issue though, there is one number that stops us from buying something like this, and that is the price. So here in Canada, if you're going for a Ranger XP Kinetic Ultimate, you're talking about 48 thousand dollars and that number alone i go no there is no chance the flip side of that argument is we don't go very far so we don't use a lot of gas that means that the upcharge for the electric is not going to be worth it for us we're going to have to drive this thing for years before it actually pays itself off from the fuel savings so it's it's just it's frustrating honestly dad and i have been talking a lot about it and i keep saying this thing would work great for us and then he just goes yeah but there's no chance i would ever pay for it and he's absolutely right this is something we're seeing in automotive now too a lot of electric vehicles can be the right tool for the right job it's all about usage case however the usage case almost doesn't matter when it's this dang expensive if it was on par with the gas model then right away this makes way more sense but right now today in 2025 this honestly makes no sense because of how much money polaris is charging for it I have one more gripe here and that's kind of simple. This is the Polaris charge cable in this bag and they don't give me anywhere to put it. It's not gonna fit in the storage here, any of the glove boxes. I think the natural spot would be down here on the floor under the seat, but then it's just sitting loose. You get on a rough enough trail, it's flying all over the place. Now granted, if you're like us and the machine never leaves the property, well then sure, the charge cable will just stay in your basement or close to the plug. But if you are actually going out on a long ride and taking that with you, it should have a place to live on the machine so it just seems like a bit of an oversight but yeah you know what folks that's already it for this one now in a future video we're going to do a full ride review i'll talk to you about how quick this thing is overall top speed how it tows a trailer we will do all that but for now i just want you to go into the comments and tell me what you think about all electric side by sides and atvs because in my opinion i've already said this i'll say it one more time this is the right tool for the right job this is going to work really well for a lot of people I just think they gotta work on the pricing. And I know batteries are expensive. That's what we constantly hear from all of these manufacturers. I find it hard to believe that they are this expensive, that the upcharge has to be this much over the gas model. And when the day finally comes that the all electric model and the gas model are at par price-wise, well, that will really make this an attractive offer. But that's where I'll leave it. Now I wanna hear from you. Drop in the comments, let me know what you think about this all electric Ranger Kinetic and all electric sort of ATVs and side-by-sides in general. As always, while you're down below leaving me that comment, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join, become a member of our channel, and come right back here to TK Power Sports, see what we're testing next.